Hey, what's up guys? Cookie here for another countdown. Some of you guys suggested we do a top 10 for the hero ships in Starfighter Assault. So we listened and here it is. Now this countdown will be done a little differently than the hero and villain countdowns we did before because this list is based solely on effectiveness in game and not how cool slash fun slash movie accurate they are but instead just on purely how good they are in the game and how effective they are to you. So without further ado, let's get into it. At number 10 in last place is Slave one. Now this pains me since Slave 1, in my opinion, is the coolest starfighter in all of the history of the Star Wars films, and DICE did a good job of capturing that awesomeness in the sound and design of the ship, however it's just not that good. The seismic charge is awesome, but its cooldown is painfully slow and is really the only defense Slave 1 has since it is so slow of a ship. Slave 1 is also painfully bulky and struggles to avoid collision with objects. Its laser cannons are also very inaccurate and a disappointment. I feel like Slave 1 deserved better, unfortunately. In at number 9 is Han and Chewbacca's Millennium Falcon. Overall, the Falcon is pretty good. It has very high health, which it needs considering its bulky size. It also has afterburners, which is unusual for a large starfighter, but it is a little underwhelming when activated. But it does give the Falcon something. Its special modifications gun is useful, but overall Han's Falcon suffers from similar problems as Slave 1. It just sticks out like a sore thumb and doesn't have a lot of ways to escape or defend itself. A turret gunner would have been a nice touch just saying number eight is luke skywalker's x-wing luke has two very special powers that can make the x-wing very dangerous his obi-wan's guidance power allows his missiles to instantly lock on to an enemy saving the x-wing tons of time and also luke's r2d2 repair comes in handy to give luke some much needed health Luke's shortfall is that his X-Wing takes damage quite rapidly and is only slightly better than a normal X-Wing fighter outside of those two abilities. So Luke is pretty great, but not as good as most of the other Starfighter ships. Number seven, it's Darth Maul's Scimitar. The Scimitar is very bulky like the Falcon in Slave 1, which makes it a very easy target. However, the Scimitar comes with Stealth Drive, which allows it to evade very effectively. Not only is it good for escaping trouble, it's also great at causing it, because when Darth Maul comes out of stealth mode he can instantly barrage an unsuspecting enemy. Stealth Drive also has a pretty quick cooldown so it can be used often which is good because the scimitar's health is pretty low for a big ship and its primary weapon overheats pretty easily. However upgrading the scimitar's advanced capacitors can make the ship an absolute horror. Keep that in mind. Darth Vader's TIE Advanced Fighter comes in at number 6. Vader's TIE Advanced is one of the most nimble ships in the game, allowing it to avoid obstacles easily, but it also has afterburners, which are crucial considering the ship's low health. Its overwhelming barrage is very useful since it's almost always ready to be used, again, considering you get two at a time. Perhaps the best thing about Vader's ship is that it doesn't stick out among the other TIE fighters since it looks very similar to the other fighters, making it hard for the enemy to target Darth Vader at all. At number 5, straight from The Last Jedi DLC, is Tally Lintra's A-Wing. As you know from my top 10 vehicles list, I like A-Wings, seeing as A-Wings were selected as the number 1 vehicle. So it should come as no surprise that a Super A-Wing would rank well on this list too. However, it's not quite as high as I thought it would be when I first heard of it. It suffers from a similar problem to Luke's X-Wing in that it's only a little better than the normal version of the same Starfighter. Tally's A-Wing does have very effective dual concussion missiles, and her blue leader ability is great for teamwork, and just like Vader, she mixes in with the other fighters. So there's a lot of positives to like about Tally, and I think overall it's a very good starfighter. In at number four is Kylo Ren's TIE Silencer. The TIE Silencer has perhaps the best primary weapon fire in the game. It's the perfect mix of accurate and rapid, while also not overheating too fast. His dual mag pulse torpedoes do take a while to be deployed, but once they are, they're one of the most deadly in the game. Kylo's ship also has relatively high health and an afterburner ability, which allows him to stay alive longer, making his ship one of the best to get Starfighter killstreaks. Let's just not talk about Kylo's voice in it. It's, it's not good. Number three is Rey and Chewbacca's Millennium Falcon. Rey's version of the Falcon is an improvement on Han's version in two major ways. 
It has a better and more accurate primary weapon, and more importantly, an auxiliary repair option. This makes Ray's Falcon almost unstoppable because it can take so many hits. Both Falcons take a lot of shots to blow up, but Ray's takes that many shots and then she can heal herself right back up too. Apparently the Millennium Falcon is one of those things that just gets better with age. The runner-up is Yoda's Jedi Interceptor. Speed kills. That is the motto of this starfighter. Yoda's interceptor has the fastest rate of fire and the fastest velocity overall. Not to mention it's even equipped with afterburners if you didn't have enough speed already. All that quickness makes Yoda's ship very hard to pin down or escape. Making things harder on enemies is Yoda's ion pulse, which makes for sure that no enemy fighter will be able to afterburner away. The one drawback is that the Interceptor has very low health, but if you're nimble and watch your back, the Interceptor can rack up the kills really quick. And at number one, it's Poe Dameron. Prior to the Last Jedi DLC, I would not have put Poe at number one, but thanks to his afterburner upgrade, Poe is a relatively easy choice. Poe already had the most effective healing option with BB-8 repair, and his Black Leader power was one of the best powers of any starfighter, allowing all allies to see highlighted versions of enemy starfighters within a certain area and increase the damage on those ships. But now with the added afterburner ability, Poe also has the ability to avoid enemy fire and recharge himself for another go. All this is why Poe Dameron tops our list. So did you guys like the list? Did you think I got it wrong? Let me know in the comments below and also hit up the comments with suggestions for new top 10 Battlefront 2 ideas. Also smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, donate if you can, watch another video as always, and of course, as always, have an awesome day guys. I warn you not to underestimate my powers. Do not throw away your potential. Don't force me to kill you!